Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, uh, this is going to be a video here where I'm going to drop some truth because the other day I went on a, a tirade on Facebook about Mikey Garcia. I've been going on a lot of tirades with Mikey Garcia because I feel like when when, a me when the media is pushing certain fighters and the fighter is speaking as if they've accomplished something, they have a responsibility to try to validate that hype. They do. Um, and when they when they, when they pick when they pick fights that are clear cherry picks to anybody who knows boxing, um, you know you got to call it out for what it is, and you got to really get, you got to read, read between the lines. So I, I went on a tirade the other day on Facebook about Mikey Garcia, and I was just talking about basically like how he's a cherry picker, how he's a James Harden of boxing, you know, a guy with so much natural talent, but not 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 enough fire in his belly to truly obtain greatness. You know, he don't like boxing like that. You don't have you know, he don't have that dog in him as far as wanting to be a great fighter. He just wants to be a superstar. He wants the glitz and the glam, but he don't want he don't want the blood, sweat, and tears that get that, that, that it takes to get to the glitz and the glam. So I've been trying I've been calling him out for that. I've been calling him out for a lot of things because we know that the West Coast boxing media establishment, you know, due to who get credentialed by Golden Boy, live in Vegas or LA, going to fights that they're consistently they're not gonna speak Mikey Garcia because he is one of the, the, the darlings of that, you know, neck of the woods. So being that I don't give a damn about that because I ain't from the West Coast and I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just a kid from Dania, you know, in South Florida. I'm gonna call it out for what it is. Um, I call my I call my so I call my UFC in my status. I I call him a paper champ. I call Sergey Lipinitz a paper champion because that's what he is. And then you know, big shouts out to my my main man Xavier Porter. You know, Brooklyn fights. Go subscribe to Brooklyn fights. You know, he's got great stuff over there. I, I really do respect Xavier, but I highly disagree with something he said in my status. Xavier said something, and I'm this 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 is what the whole premise of the video is about. Xavier said that you can't call so you can't call a fighter any fighter, you can't call any fighter a paper champion, you can't call any fighter a, a trinket holder, you can't call him a title holder, you know you can't call him you know paper basically said you can't call him a paper champion, and I highly disagree with that. I, I not only do I think that. Fighters should get called paper champions if they actually are paper champions. But I also think that it's necessary. It's actually necessary. And I want to tell you why it's necessary. Because if you're someone who doesn't cover boxing and you don't normally follow boxing, right? You don't know the inner workings of boxing, all right? And let's say you're watching these fights and you're hearing that this guy is a world champion and that guy is a world champion and that guy is a world champion and Joe Blow is a world champion. Then you're going to think that all these world champions are equal. That all these guys are created equal. Well, no, they're not created equal because one guy could win a belt vacantly against a lower level fighter in the in the, in the lower part of the top ten, because that can happen. And then one guy might have might win a world title as an underdog against the A side fighter. And then one guy might, you know, it's just, it, there's different scenarios of how you can win world titles and the, and the kind of opponent you can beat to win the world titles. So if you get a good decision. If you want to fight that, if you have a close fight with somebody you were supposed to blow out, and you clearly lost, and you just get the gift decision because you're the politically more connected fighter, and you have no other quality ones in your resume except a C level cannon fodder opponent by PBC, then you are a paper champion. You have to call guys that are paper champions paper champions if they get gift decisions because that will help. People, other people who don't follow boxing as closely differentiate what's real and what's fake. All right, you see what I'm saying? Like, um, and that's just what it is. It, 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 it's a necessary evil in boxing to call somebody a paper, a paper champion. Um, and I think like if you're if you're if you're someone who covers this sport and you're not calling certain fighters paper champions, then you're doing the sport a disservice because these sanctioning bodies and these titles are causing a lot of confusion. It causes a lot of confusion with fans that know boxing and don't know boxing. It really, it really, really does. Um, so when a guy is paper champion, you call it out as such. Sergey Lipinets is a, is a paper champion. Um, you know, some people look at Robert Easter as a paper champion because people think he's gotten three gifts in a row. Some people thought Richard Comey beat him. Some people, I thought Shafikov beat him, and I didn't get a chance to watch the Fortuna fight because like I um I turned on the fight kind of late. But um, a lot of people are saying Fortuna beat Easter as well. So with that being said, man, like. Like there's that, you know, a lot of people labeled Andre Wood a champion, uh, a paper champion for a while at 175, um, and some people still do, you know. Regardless, now that, that all depends how you see the second fight. So, calling fighters that are clear paper champions, you know, 
paper champions, it, it's a necessary evil for the sport because what it does is it it allows people who don't know the sport as well to read to try to at least get the chance to read between the lines. You see what I'm saying? Like if they don't know what's how the sport works as far as how it's administrated and all that stuff like that, it get it, it allows people to read between the lines, and that's what we need. We need more transparency. We, we need more people who are in boxing in the media and um, that cover this sport to tell it how it is. You know, we need more Teddy Atlases. We need more precise presenters. We need more uh, Mr. Boxing Todays. We need more uh, Thunderdome Boxing Talks, Maxwell Bears. We need more channels like that, man. Like, there's a lot of great channels out there, but but seldomly do they tell it like it is. Seldomly do the, the, the higher channels, the ones that have the most subscribers, they don't want to tell it how it is because they're afraid of getting their press pass taken away. And, you know, and, you know a, a guy that I respect a lot that I try to like, you know, even model myself after in some ways, you know, Radio Raheem, uh, he has his own way of telling how it is. And he does great work, you know, um, with, with his interviews. He does standout interview after standout interview. And, you know, luckily for me, I actually had a chance to, to spend a couple of days with Radio Raheem uh, in New York City working with him and stuff like so. He was, he was, he was, he was a good guy. Um, shout out to Radio Raheem. But, um, yeah, man, like it, it's necessary. It really, it really, really is. And um, like I said, man, if you're not, you know, you know, my, my thing is this too. Like, how in the world do we, as boxing fans, right, and, and reporters, and and, and and many of us, many of us who cover this sport, because let's face it, most people who are in who are who are interested in boxing, it's because of someone they know. Maybe they fought uh, themselves, they trained themselves. Oh, they had family who trained themselves. Everybody, that's how boxing generally works with boxing fans. Like, so my thing is, how is it that we cover such a brutal sport with such harsh personalities, and yet people are so sensitive? Like, I, I don't get it, man. Like, if if you as a fighter don't like to be called paper champion, then you need to do whatever you can to share that label. That's what you need to do, or not, or, or not even just care. Don't even care about it. Kill, or don't ignore the noise. Go about your business. Train hard. Get ready for that big fight, win the big fight, and then that label is shed. You know, so that's just what it is, man. These are my reasons of why you need to call a guy. You, why it's necess- it's a necessary evil because we can't be too sensitive in the sport. Obviously, I I, I respect all fighters, man. I know I, I I come on here and I talk trash. You know, I, I do talk some trash and I do get hard on some of these fighters, but it, it it's just because you know I have to call it out because if I don't call it out, you know, there's nobody else in America, and let's at least in American boxing media. Who's gonna call these fighters out? And um, if I can just use my little platform here to do that, I'll do it. Because what do I have to lose? So that's just what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that fighters sh- sh- that um, get questionable wins for a title or wins that people deem as gift decisions, do you think that they should be called paper champions? Or do you think that we as boxing fans need to respect all fighters and not throw those labels on fighters because it's disrespectful? Let me know in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. And you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from doing it. So until next time, take care, guys.